Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the voltages across each of the components and across each of the branches. So we're going to start with finding the voltage across the first resistor, then the voltage across the inductor, and so forth. How do we do that? Well, the voltage across any component is equal to the current through that component times the resistance or reactance or impedance of that particular component or that particular branch. So here we have the I think eight voltages we're trying to calculate, so let's start with the voltage across R1, and of course the phase angle is indeed important in each one of these. So in the first one, we have the current I going through the resistor, and we have to multiply that times the resistance. So let's go ahead and I is equal to 0.415 amps with a phase angle. I guess we should put the amp behind it there, so we have the units. So um, 0.415 with a phase angle of 7 point or s minus 71.615 degrees. And we're going to multiply the times the resistance. And so the resistance of 4 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And so what does that give us? So 0.415 times 4 is equal to 1.66 with a phase angle of negative 71.615 degrees. So this is the voltage across resistor, magnitude, and phase angle. Now what about the voltage across the inductor, our first inductor? We take the same current, 0.415 amps with a phase angle of minus 71.615 degrees. That's a point here. And we're going to multiply the times the reactance of that inductor, which is a J20, so it gives us a magnitude of 20 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And so this becomes equal to uh, 0.415 times 20, that gives us 8.3, because this would be in volts. I guess we should put volts behind it because it's in volts. 8.3 and a phase angle of, let's see here, that would be uh, 71.615 plus 90. That gives us 18.39. So with a phase angle of a positive 18.39 degrees. And so that would be also in volts. That's the voltage across an inductor. Now what about the voltage across both of them together? Well, to do that, we take the current times the impedance of the two components together. So that will give us 0 0.415 minus 71.615 degrees. That should be a 5. Multiply times the impedance Z1 and the impedance Z1. I guess I did not keep the impedance of Z1, so we're going to have to find that. Uh, we have a real component of 4, imagine a component of 20, so that would be 4. Smokey! Smokey! That's enough. Okay. That was our dog misbehaving down there. All right. <laughs> I don't think they want to know. <laughs> All right, that's 4 squared plus 20 squared, that's 400. Take the square root of that, that would be 20.4, so it's a magnitude of 20.4, with a phase angle of, that would be 20 divided by 4, take the inverse tangent of that, that's 78.69 degrees. So I took the impedance of the resistor and the inductor together, and that will then be equal to, multiply, 20.4 times 0.415, 8.47, at a phase angle of, we have 71.615, that's a negative, plus 78.69, that gives us 7.08, 7.08 for the phase angle. So that's also in volts, so this is the voltage across that first branch, the resistor and the inductor. So now next we're going to find the voltage across R2, that's this resistor right here. So for that we take I1, and we kept that from the previous video, so it would be 0 0.24 with a phase angle of 
minus 16.13 degrees. We multiply that times the impedance of that branch, which is Z2, which is simply a resistor. So we multiply that times 16 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And when we multiply that, 16 times 0.24, we get 3.84 with a phase angle of minus 16.13 degrees. Of course, that's in volts. That's the voltage across that resistor. Now the voltage across the capacitor. To do that, we take the current through that branch, which is I2, which we have right there, 0 0.34 with a phase angle of minus 106.13 degrees. We multiply that times the capacitor reactance X sub C, which is a magnitude of 14 and a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. And so this will be equal to 2.34 times 14, that gives us 4.76 with a phase angle of minus 196.13 degrees. That's also, of course, in volts. Okay, next we're going to find the voltage across the second inductor. That's this inductor right here. To do that, we take the current, the same current as through the capacitor, with a phase angle of minus 106.13 degrees. We multiply that times the inductive reactance, which would be 25 with a phase angle of plus 90 degrees. And so 0.34 times 25 gives us 8.5 with a phase angle of minus 16.13 degrees. Of course, that's also in volts. Now we go to the branch, the second branch with the capacitor and the inductor. So we take the current through that branch. Again, same current. Minus 106.13 degrees. We multiply times the impedance of that branch, Z3. And the impedance will be the sum of these two. That gives us a plus J11. So magnitude of 11 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. So 0.34 times 11. That gives us 3.74 with a phase angle of minus 16.13 degrees and that's in volts as well. So that's the voltage drop across the branch on the right there with the capacitor and the inductor. And finally, we want to take the, the voltage across the entire parallel branch. So that's the same as V1. We can also calculate that because we calculated that in the previous video, but we can also calculate it here by taking the total current entering that branch, which is I, and, <clears throat> and I is 0.415, with a phase angle of minus 71.615 degrees and multiplying that times the impedance of the parallel branch, which we kept right here from the previous video, which is 9.06 with a phase angle of 55.49 degrees. And we multiply that together, we get 0.415 times 9.06, which is 3.76 with a phase angle of 71.615 minus plus 55.49. That gives it minus 16.13, minus 16.13. That's also in volts, that's degrees. And there, that gives us the voltage across the parallel branch, which, by the way, is the same value that we calculated in the previous video when we tried to calculate V1 using a voltage divider calculation. And also, just so we can see here, here we have the current into the circuit. We have I1 and I2 for the current through the two branches, the two parallel branches. And here is a phasor diagram of these three currents just to kind of get a feel to see that, yes, they are indeed different in phases. And so when we see that I1 and I2 together, vectorially, do add up to the total current going into the circuit. So that's how we calculate all the various components, the voltages, the current, and so forth. It took a few videos to do that because, as you can see, there's lots of calculations, but that's how it's done.